Welcome back to Thursday Bible Study. I'm Pastor J.P. O'Connor, and I'm lead pastor here at West Covina Hills. And this is Pastor Jillian Lutz, and she's our youth pastor here at West Covina Hills. And we are glad that you've chosen to join us today. Why don't we begin with a word of prayer? Certainly. Precious Lord, thank you so much for all you've done in our lives. Help us to bring those things to mind today as we as we look at this great passage about remembering the big things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so uh, just to follow up, Israel has crossed the Jordan. Um, they are, the, the river is dried up. God has made a way through. They are about to enter the promised land. So this is a big transitional moment. And um, God takes two chapters to deal with this event. Mm -hmm. And in the second part of the event, it's uh, memorial stones. Yeah. Uh, but, but let's dive right in. We're in the book of Joshua, chapter 4. And I'm going to begin reading with verse 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan, the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them, saying, Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood firm, you shall carry over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. God wants them to take stones out of the center of the river, <clears throat> right where the priests are standing, take 12 stones and carry them out. And it wants the one for each tribe. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm just, God is into um, making memorials. Yeah. I don't know if people yeah. realize this, um, you know, because we don't live in the Middle East. But there are a lot of memorials that are set up for God and mm -hmm. his victories. For instance, um, I, I watched a video uh, recently that there were memorial stones that were set up uh, where the uh, Israelites entered through the Red Sea and came out the Red Sea. Now, I've never cool. personally been there. But um, but there are pillars that were set mm -hmm. up to mm -hmm. as a memorial of where they entered and where mm -hmm. they exited. Um, uh, Abraham, when he traveled through his journeys, would set up a uh, an, an altar, and those altars would be mm -hmm. memorials that God was worshipped in that place. The altar yeah. would stay uh, set up, and then later generations would come back. And even in the Bible, you'll see different times where it would say, "Here, where Abraham set up his altar," or mm -hmm. "Here, where um, you know this altar was set up to the Lord." So, the, the reason I'm mentioning this is because um, even though we live in the United States of America, we don't find very memorials to the Lord. If we were to be in the Middle East we would find memorials everywhere of mm -hmm. God's power and God's working because he loves to set them up. Mm -hmm. One specifically in my mind that God did in the New Testament for us is communion, which we just right. celebrated this right. past week. Now, when I say we celebrated, it's because yes. we're, we're recording the Thursday after communion. Yes. But this is probably many weeks later that mm -hmm. you're seeing this video. Yeah. Uh, to to in the interest of full disclosure, um, this coming weekend, as we're as we're filming this, is Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, which is also a memorial to an important man in our nation's history. Absolutely right, and the fight for uh, freedom, mm -hmm. and, um, and you know, holidays or memorials, mm -hmm. um, uh, communion. Uh, you know, I was trying to think of a few that that we have that you know. Uh, the, the Passover is set mm -hmm. up as a memorial of the event uh, for the Egyptians, but now it means something to us as Christians. Mm -hmm. There's just so much that God does so that we can remember. Yes. And I think yes. it's because we have a tendency to forget. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, the, maybe the greatest memorial of them all is the Sabbath. Yes. And the weekly memorial of creation. And it's the only commandment that begins with remember. remember. Mm-hmm. Memorials, so you know they are uh, important and they exist. Uh, you know, I, I want to read a little bit more and I want to get into what this memorial means uh, spiritually for the Israelites. But at the moment, I just I just want to take a moment to talk about the way that God uses memory, mm -hmm. how He establishes physical realities to remind us of spiritual things, and yeah. He does that over and over. Verse four. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe, 
And Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan. Each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them from the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Lord of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. I want you to notice that God says, I want the kids to know. Yeah. Now, uh, earlier in the Bible, when the Ten Commandments are given in Deuteronomy, God talks about how important it is for us when our kids are walking with us on the road or before they go to sleep, when they wake up in the morning, to talk about these memories because mm -hmm. they don't know. Unless we tell them, yeah. they don't have the information. But I just love that God is thinking about the kids here. Mm -hmm. I think it's the coolest thing ever. Like God is saying, mm -hmm. I want the kids to know what all of this is, what happened to you. Because if you don't tell them, then that memory is lost. It, yeah. It's forgotten. And we need to pass on this information to our kids. We, we, need to, we need to let them know the amazing things that have happened in our life mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a testimony. And then they mm -hmm. will be able to share it with their kids too. Yeah, it doesn't matter how great of a thing you have going if you fail to transmit it to the next generation. God is the original youth pastor. For sure, for yeah. sure. Um, the other thing that I wanna that I wanna bring up um, is where did the I, I I tried to process this in my mind. These big stones mm -hmm. come from the middle of the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I was, I was processing, so mm -hmm. bear with me, right? It would be physically impossible for me to go down into the middle of this river and haul out the stones when the water is flowing. I think that there is a... You can dive for it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying... <laughs> You couldn't take a construction vehicle or a crane. Mm -hmm. That's not what I mean. I'm just saying that 12 men walked into the river, mm -hmm. removed a stone that would be for them, you know, yeah. basically impossible to get out unless mm -hmm. this event happened. And I was thinking about the miraculous nature of it. God mm -hmm. wants them to take the stones from the middle, not from the edge, mm -hmm. not from the side, mm -hmm. from the middle so that there is a uh, miraculous nature to the, not just the event, but a miraculous nature to the stone itself. That right. it came out of the center of a dry river that shouldn't have been dry. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first thing that I thought about with this story is that it comes out of the middle. Second thing I talked about is for us today in the Christian era, I think about baptism. Mm. I think about this memorial of baptism that God gave us that is a reminder of when our journey begins, mm. of when our first commitment to the Lord happens, when we gave our life to God. It is mm. this memorial of when things started, right? Here, God takes rocks out of the center of the river, right, mm. that would have been covered by water, drowned dead, and they bring it out and they give this rock life. Mm -hmm. And now it is a memorial. It's a it's a moment to be remembered. It's a moment to be praised. It's a mm -hmm. moment to be passed on. And um, I kind of, you know, uh, in, in the Bible, the children of Israel going through the Red Sea was a type of baptism. Mm -hmm. But now we see that going through the Jordan River is a type of baptism again. For the new generation. For the new generation, right? Because everybody that was 40 year old, forty and over died except for Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. So everybody that's still alive 40 years before, they were children, yeah, uh, young adults. Yeah. Uh, they were kids or they were not born yet. Mm -hmm. um, but now the, they're, they're coming out of the wilderness and they are recommitted. And mm -hmm. through the baptism, God wants to set up a memorial mm -hmm. uh, to that. Uh, interesting, just this past Sabbath, I had a woman uh, come to church from Norwalk. Uh, she was a member there. Her and her husband mm -hmm. came and visited. And she said to me, Pastor, you baptized me, but I didn't receive a baptismal certificate. Now, I don't remember, <laughs> okay? Uh, we're talking about 15 years ago. or These things happen every once in a while. <laughs> I, 
I never, by the PS, I don't fill out baptismal certificates. I don't give out, my secretaries take care of that stuff. Maybe, you know, we blew it. Or I, you know, I don't know. I used to be the one who filled them out for West Covina because I had the neatest handwriting. <laughs> Calligraphy, you know, I don't have, I don't have I don't, not even my, uh, not even my nice handwriting is nice. So I try not to, I, not, I try not to touch any of that stuff. Let my secretaries take care of it. But, um, but she was really, uh, you know, I don't have my certificate, and I told mm. her, don't worry, uh, just send me the date, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll, and I'll fill out a, a new one and sign it. Um, but it's, it's a memorial. And I, and I was thinking about it this week as I was preparing for this lesson. I thought it's, it's a memorial. It is that thing that we hold dear, mm -hmm. that we can put up on a wall or that we could put on our desk mm -hmm. or as a reminder of our beginning, of when we walked through the waters mm -hmm. and the Lord was there with us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we... Um, when we made our step, our public declaration of our love for Jesus. And so the, God wants the Israelites to remember this moment. Mm -hmm. And the stones, the 12 stones, will be a memorial for that. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, the children of Israel did so. Just as Joshua commanded and took up the 12 stones from the midst of the Jordan, as the Lord had spoken to Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them to the place where they lodged, and they laid them down there. Then Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there to this day. Now here's the second part of the story that's interesting. What does Joshua do? He didn't have any help with this, but he sets up twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan where the priest stood that had been in the middle of the jordan yeah so um he sets up 12 stones in the midst of the jordan he sets a pillar in the middle of the river mm -hmm. who's going to see that <laughs> now it's interesting that it says they're still there to this day that pile of 12 stones but joshua is doing something different than the 12 men carrying the stones out that are going to be a memorial that people are going to ask about those stones Joshua does something completely separate on his own uh, uh, an underwater memorial what is going on why is he setting up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan in the place where the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood and they're there to this day why would he do that nobody's going to see it mm. what difference would it make I'm going to go back to baptism and I'm going to say that the reason why 12 stones are set up in the midst of the Jordan is to symbolize the death of what is old. Mm. Uh, the past is buried. It is mm. gone. Um, I like passages in the Bible where it talks about that our sins are thrown to the deepest part of the ocean, which, you know, we can't even send down submarines that are strong mm. enough to handle the pressures in the deepest part of the ocean. But um, I, I think what is happening here is that Joshua is making a memorial to what is old and buried, mm. to what is left behind, and what is going to be in the past. And it's buried under the waters of the mm. river. Um, and that is what happens in baptism. When we go under the water, our life is suspended. We're dead and buried, as the mm. illustration as Romans chapter 6. And Jesus' death and burial are the, mm -hmm. are the main point, but our past lives are, are buried. Our sins are forgiven, and that is left behind. And mm -hmm. as we come out of the waters, we have new life and a testimony to the fact that God mm -hmm. has made us clean, he's washed us, and he's given us a second chance. Now, mm -hmm. You know, I think to myself that there are people, maybe even watching this video, who uh, underestimate the power of baptism. And maybe you yourself um, have thought about being rebaptized, maybe because your life has gone in a certain way, or you have, um, you know, struggled, uh, mm -hmm. or maybe you've gone through a period of, of darkness and God has brought you mm -hmm. back to the light. And I just want you to know that there's something powerful about the symbol of leaving your life behind, mm -hmm. and getting a fresh start and a new beginning with God. Uh, and it's an opportunity to set up a memorial stone. So I'm just kind of encouraging yeah. you to, to not be shy about it, to take right, that step. Right, right. And, you know, 
there, there are other things where perhaps you need a chance to physically lay to rest a specific period of your life. When I was in, when I was in college, I dated a young man and it was a bad relationship. He had given me a ring, and I didn't know what to do with this ring when when um, when we broke up. It was after I started dating the man who is now my husband that on a church trip, I, I took that ring and I threw that ring into the ocean. It just felt so cleansing to have the physical symbol of this bad relationship, um, just to watch it in the waves. Mm. Um, and sometimes, sometimes when you've gone through a chapter like that, something you're not proud of or something that gave you mm -hmm. traumatic memories or whatever, it can be very powerful to just let go a physical object that represents that time. Yeah, that's powerful. And I think we all have um, moments like that where we, you know, physically let go of the past so that we can move forward into yeah. the, the future. Thanks for sharing. Verse 10. So the priests who bore the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished, that the Lord had commanded Joshua to speak to the people according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua, and the people hurried and crossed over. So it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over, that the ark of the Lord and the priests crossed over in the presence of the people. And the men of Reuben, the men of Gad, half the tribe of Manasseh, crossed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses had spoken to them. So the Bible is very clear that Joshua had done everything the Lord had commanded him. Mm -hmm. And then the two and a half tribes whose families had settled on this side crossed over for war. So the Bible is very specific about them coming over and joining the Israelites who are moving mm -hmm. into the promised land. So those two and a half tribes, they're men of war now have crossed over. Their families uh, were able to stay and settle and start their farms and start their livelihood and life. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, about 40,000 prepared for war, crossed over before the Lord for battle to the plains of Jericho. And on that day, the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of Israel. They feared him as they had feared Moses all the days of his life. Mm. Um, Joshua shows himself to be the kind of leader at this in this moment mm. that the people were wanting. And, and I wonder about this. What were the qualities of this moment that esteemed Joshua in their eyes? And I thought, well, maybe it's the miracle. Because God had done miracles for Moses. Mm -hmm. I thought, maybe it's the miracle. But then um, it kind of cheapens the moment. What did Joshua have to do with the miracle? Uh, well, th th this is not a single mm -hmm. isolated point in time. Remember, Joshua's been with them for 40 years. Mm -hmm. 40 years before this, he said... When everyone else was all, nope, he said, yeah, there's giants, but it is it is flowing with milk and honey, and with God's help, we can take it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here, he's being proven right that, you know, after 40 years of wandering around and waiting, they are getting to the point. It's a huge moment of validation for what he's been saying mm -hmm. for 40 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that the leadership quality that I see here is what is mentioned in the verse and the verse specifically says that Joshua did everything that the Lord had commanded him mm -hmm. to do. That's what made him strong in the eyes of the people, is that mm -hmm. the Lord asked him to do something, and he did it exactly as the Lord commanded. That quality of being simply obedient to what God has called mm -hmm. you to do is extremely powerful. Sometimes people will ask me, um, and I don't know if they do this to you, how do I know what God's will is? Oh my goodness, I get that a couple times a week sometimes. Mm -hmm. I want to know what God's will is. I'm struggling to know what God's will is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what God's will is. It's a simple idea. This is God's will. Mm -hmm. It's right here. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need uh, a vision or a sign from heaven. Simply doing what God has commanded us mm -hmm. to do in his word is exactly what makes us Christian, faithful followers, passionate leaders for God. Because of the age group I work with, a lot of the what's God's will for my life questions that I get are about things that this does not comment on. Mm -hmm. Things like, what should I do with my life? What major should I study? What what career should I take? What job should I interview? What, what, what person should mm -hmm. I marry? Okay, okay. Let me make this simple for you. If it doesn't contradict this... No one in your and no one in your family um, has serious concerns about it, and you want to do it. 
God probably gave you that desire to do it. Just go do it and don't <laughs> agonize about it. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like there's um, some theology or teaching out there, and maybe this is a tangent and I shouldn't go down this road, but <laughs> I feel like there are people out there that believe that there's only one way to make God happy. And if I don't do that one thing, then somehow God's not going to be pleased with me or I'm not mm. going to be blessed or I'm going to be under a curse. I feel like people need to know that God has given us freedom of choice mm -hmm. so that we could choose a path that we and, could and, choose. And a... he's given a, he's given us preferences, likes and dislikes because those help calibrate us towards the choices where he would use us best. Mm -hmm. You know, faithfulness comes in many colors and flavors and it's okay to have preferences. <laughs> it's not bad if you like it. <laughs> So choose, uh, enjoy your life. God gave you freedom of choice to live and to enjoy. Yeah. Um, you know, we live in so much fear or worry, I'll do the wrong thing. If it's mm -hmm. not in his word, it's for you to choose a path. Yeah. It's for you yeah. to choose. Yeah, he, he wants you to be happy. You shouldn't choose happiness over being faithful, but if there's a range of choices that are faithful, go with what makes you happy. Absolutely. 15. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Command the priests who bear the ark of the testimony to come up out of the Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come up out of the Jordan. And it came to pass, when the priests who had bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord had come from the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet touched the dry land, that the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its bank as before. Now the people came up from the Jordan on the tenth day, of the first month and they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. So here they are. They're at the first um, point of adventure. Mm -hmm. um, they're at a critical place where they're about to, um, you know, make their first uh, act of war and mm -hmm. but they're at the beginning of their journey. And um, I, I find it interesting. It's uh, the priests in the ark are the central physical reality of God's presence. Mm -hmm. And as the priests come out of the water, everything goes back to the miracle is gone you know god is the miracle it wasn't joshua it wasn't the stones um it was god who was the miracle and i, I feel like god is making sure that everybody knows that it's him right. it wasn't the priests uh it was his presence it was his power um that did it and i feel like he makes that absolutely clear now in the first crossing of the the red sea you might say well, you know, Moses and his staff. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. you could argue or be uncertain. Was it God? Was it Moses? Whatever, you know, mm -hmm. that whole thing. But in this instance, I love the way that God gives this physical illustration of the ark being carried. Um, it, it, there's this clarity of this is God's miracle and mm -hmm. this is God's presence. And he is with us as he was with Moses. And, you know, he he is the one. Um I feel like it's clear and it gives God the glory mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a clear way. So continuing. So in verse 20, And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? When, then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over the Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. As the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before you until you had, we had crossed over, that all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord that is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Mm -hmm. God's desire is that we would uh, honor and respect and understand mm -hmm. his greatness, that he's able to part waters for us, that he's able to make a way when there is no way, that he is worthy mm -hmm. of our trust. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, what a powerful reminder of your greatness, um, of your strength, of your presence. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would speak to us to give us hope, a faith, and a future, that you would encourage us, Lord, to look at those memorial stones in our life of your working and uh, to trust you and to see those blessings and to know that if you've led us that way in the past, then you will lead us into the future. For I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.